Hey guys, on today's episode, we're removing the Nardo gray wrap on the R8 because as you can see right here, there's a bit of damage. Now in a windstorm a, a few weeks ago, uh, my tent back there, even though it's been drilled to the ground, picked up and whacked the side of the car. So I'm obviously not thrilled about that. So I have to peel this off and see what the damage is underneath, fix it and then rewrap it. Then I thought to myself, okay, if we're gonna have to rewrap it anyways, what are the options? If I could just lay them out all on the table and say, which is the right one for me? That's why I wanted to shoot it for you guys. There's color change, which I did here, meaning from silver to Nardo gray. There's livery where I mean, you can put a stripe on there and have it look like a Porsche, that kind of thing. Or there's another version, a, a kind of a more, I don't want to say advanced, but more technical from an installation perspective. And that's a design. And then on top of the design, a laminate, meaning you can have gloss or matte. So I've decided to do that. To do that, we we're flying up to Toronto to see an amazing shop that specializes in something like this. So we're going to go through all that and kind of lay out all the options and say like, hey, if I have my car, and I want to change the color, I want to do something funky, I want to own the design and have a little bit of fun, uh, what are the options to do that? So that's what this video is about today. So that and a lot more on this episode of Drive and Protect. So to see and understand how custom liveries are designed and printed, I headed up to Ontario, Canada to visit the home of Second Skin. These guys design, print, and install everything from glow-in-the-dark vehicle wraps to one-off pictures and textured wall coverings. Pretty much anything you can think of can be designed and printed here. All right, so this is essentially what we like to call the design den. This is essentially where the magic happens. Yeah. So, you know, we, we do full prints here, full designs. Uh, this is where a lot of the background stuff happens that a lot of people don't see. Uh, this wall, for example, is a beautiful picture of kind of what is the process behind start to finish creating a, a custom wrap. Uh, so it essentially starts with the idea, and we've kind of chosen the story of one of our first ideas, what kind of helped us bring our name into the industry, um, which is now you'll see in the design, which is a little Nyan cat little on a Pop-Tart. Uh, it was a funny little meme, uh, but it was for one of our clients called Dead Mouse, and uh, we essentially created his Ferrari into a Nyan cat themed Ferrari. Um, and you'll see that where it goes from design into the print, where we've actually like printed the, the concept. Yeah. Uh, you, you'll see that there's this car in white. So essentially, that's where the installation happens. Right. So now we're installing the vinyl, we're doing the whole design concept. Now actually installing this design, it's not so easy. It's not just like, okay, well, A goes to A and B goes to B. Right. Uh, a little bit of an artistic skill that's involved. You know, you're not just randomly slapping stuff everywhere. You gotta actually put a little bit of thought and design concept. You could put a star here and a star here, but you know, kind of having a little formula to your, your method is, what creates the art at the end of the day. On that note, from a customer perspective, I wanted to know what are the different wrap options and the level of difficulty for installing each of them. The, I guess the first kind of wrap would just be your basic roof wrap. You know, your, your roof wrap, your mirror wrap, your accent wrap. Uh, it's a very simple, like basic partial concept, but it's still- to change the color of that particular spot. Exactly, it still adds a design element to the car. You know, a black roof makes it more aggressive. Uh, the second most difficult, the second style would be just a full color change. Uh, you're already getting into expert level territory with this wrap mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, a full color change has a lot of difficulties on its own. Every car is different. Every car comes apart differently. Every car has to be wrapped differently. Every car has got different recesses, uh, concaves. Uh, it just, it adds to the complexity of the actual wrap itself. Um, then you get into something like this, which is more of a livery design. Um, this becomes a lot more complex. Sometimes they're very, like, they're simple liveries, which are, you know, just like a th simple, like, you know, stripe roof or stripe something. or something. Yeah. Exactly. This gets a little more complex because you're now mixing two colors uh, and you're kind of like creating like a, there's an actual design element here. So this, you know, this has to be created by a designer, then it needs to be cut properly. And then the installation also needs to happen. That installation, you know, if it's slightly off or slightly skewed, it's going to look off. It's going to look wrong. It's not going to look right. The fourth most difficult and the most complex is uh, actually what you're after. So this kind of print wrap uh, involves quite a bit of um, quite a bit of a, a process. So it has to be designed perfectly by a designer. Now these designs they have to be able to scale, you know, life size of a car. So these designs are at high resolution. These are huge files, uh, and a lot of them, like yours here, you know, it's got a lot going on. So. You'll notice you can actually see the gradation here, right on the door, right, right where like you know you kind of got your back end of the vehicle, which is solid black. Right when you get into the door, it starts turning into red. So this is going to add a lot of complexity with the actual installer. So Christian, he's going to have to line this up perfectly with the door to the roof. 
Now, lucky for you, if you've, you've, you've actually got a lot of solid black on the back end, so it's gonna simplify the back end, and I actually really like this end of the design because an R8's got, you know, with the exhaust fumes, it kind of gets a little bit, you know, messy on the back end, so having that all black kind of like hides that, you know, makes maintenance a little bit easier for you. So this is smart from the design perspective. Uh, now, when we move into the door here, we could simplify this by shrinking the gradation so it's kind of like a like sharp uh, transition from black to red, right. and that's going to simplify it just a little bit for Christian here. So, you know, when we go from the door to the roof, it kind of just like goes all the way around like a C around the car, uh, and now we're staying away from that hood. And that hood, as you know, on the R8 is massive. It goes from fender to fender, kind of like completely grabs around the whole car. Um, if we could stay away from that as much as possible, that would be great because lining up that hood with the little tiny little fender piece, right. uh, it, it gets a little bit complex. What happens if you mess it up? If you mess it up, yeah, that's, see, that's what makes this the most difficult. So let's say Christian lines it all up and his roof is slightly off. You'll see that. You'll see it like right away. So what needs to happen now is you need to redo that whole piece. You need to reprint the roof, relay the roof. I mean, you need to re-laminate it. You need to redo the whole production side of it. So the printing, the lamination, the cutting, you know, then it needs to be shipped out because you're not, you're not around the corner. Uh, so that whole thing needs to be shipped out back to New York and uh, he needs to relay that entire roof. So step one of creating a custom livery is to come up with the design or the theme. I like to create a mood board or Pinterest boards of vehicles with inspiring color schemes. Then give it to a pro designer and let them figure out how to improve it, scale it to fit your particular car, and then show you a couple of different options. In my case, because this was insanely short notice and in defense of second skin, we quickly came up with a design that would test the new Oracle Pro Slide material based on the printed fade and the complexity of the R8 shape, knowing it wasn't going to be on the car for very long. After I left, the dimensions of the R8 are entered into the printer software, along with the design and, in our test project case, the fade. Both Christian and Tiago monitor the initial samples and adjust as needed. Once good to go, the printer lays down the color and blend, then creates the unique sections of the vehicle on one long sheet divided by white cut lines. Afterwards, the print is laminated in a matte film and the edges are trimmed before shipping. Now, on the way out, Tiago showed me their custom-designed wall coverings. These are individually laid triangles over a brushed bronze backing. My favorite part of the tour was the XIX 3D computer program in the lobby designed by Tiago for wrap shops around the world. This system allows customers to design a custom wrap on their car with hundreds of variables and test the final look in multiple settings. Daytime, nighttime, raining, desert, sun, shadows, and so on. But the coolest part is the program allows for a virtual reality tour of your car on the inside and the outside to be 100% sure you're going to love the wrap even before it's installed. With that, I headed back home and waited for the wrap to arrive in a few days. In the meantime, I prepared for Christian's arrival by washing the R8 and the Nardo wrap thoroughly. Now I did this not necessarily to make the old wrap shiny, but to dislodge any trapped dirt from the seams and tight spaces prior to removing it and prepping for the new installation. I first power washed the wheels, applied plum with an aerator, allowed it to sit for 20 seconds, used a wheel woolly starting from the top to the bottom, wheel brushed the lug nuts, rinsed again, and moved to the next wheel. Next, I power washed the wrap, but really focused on all the seams or panel gaps to blow out any dirt that would inevitably fall out during the install and cause imperfections or pimples in the final product. Now, trust me, this is not overkill. Take your time here. Then I foamed the wrap and used a soapy microfiber towel and clean brush to agitate the tight spots around the R8, followed up by another heavy rinse and eventual microfiber towel dry before pulling inside to blow out all the seams with water. Remember, we're going to install a vinyl wrap and not a clear bra. Wraps do not use water or lubrication, unlike clear bras, so we must have all the water removed to avoid adhesion issues later on. Next, Christian and I jacked up the R8 and removed all the wheels to have easy access to the fender liners and bolts that hold both the front and the rear bumpers in place. Then he removed the 3M double-sided tape by gently sliding a plastic wedge tool under the badge and did the same thing for the front Audi rings. Now we needed to remove the Nardo wrap, and started with the upper rear bumper, which, if you remember, had the ammo logo underneath it. With a little bit of heat and pulling, the wrap peels off, revealing the original protected paint below, and, in this case, the decal as well. Next, I wanted to see how well the wrap protected the corner panel from the tent bump. It was hard to see what was actually damaged or if it was just glue until he removed the wrap completely. 
As you can see, 80% of the impact was absorbed by the vinyl, and the dark impact areas was actually glue residue easily removed with his finger and just a little bit of heat. Just for a point of reference, a clear bra would have probably absorbed about 99% of this particular impact, while the wrap only absorbed about 80%, which is still pretty good since protection is not wrap's primary purpose. Nonetheless, I was happy, and I could polish out the remaining scuffs and be back good as new. From there, it took two guys about one hour to remove the remaining wrap on the R8. Next step, you guessed it, disassembly. 10,000 bolts later, the front bumper was off, the rear bumper was off, then the mirrors, door handles, the headlights were removed from the car, and the same thing for the taillights, but we brought in some reinforcement help based on the complexity of this particular style wrap, and we all wanted to practice with this new Oracle material. The first step before installing the wrap is to mask off the surrounding edges with 3M's 301 Plus tape. We did this in case a blade is later needed in this area. Before the film is applied, one last isopropyl alcohol wipe down is done, especially on the edges, to pick up any remaining glue left from the previous wrap. Afterwards, knifeless tape is pre-placed along the window seams while we waited for the garage to warm up so the surface temp of 68 to about 72 degrees can be met for optimal installation. Looking back on this now, I should have washed the car with warm water to help avoid the temperature drop from the earlier wash, but I didn't know this was a concern, so lesson learned for the next time. Once we got up to temp, Christian used compressed air one last time before taping the wrapped pieces into place. Each piece needs to be carefully measured and placed in a specific location. Unlike a straight color change where every piece of film can go anywhere on the car, here each piece was measured, placed, checked, double checked, taped, moved and retaped, and so on until he was a thousand percent satisfied to avoid a reprint and a massive delay. This is why it's super helpful to have a second hand when installing a custom print wrap. Once the backing is removed, the trick here is to stretch the material, but not to stretch it so much that it doesn't align with its adjacent panel. It's a very tedious process as you can see. Once down, the film is squeegeed, heated, stretched, and cut where necessary. Then the knifeless tape is pulled up, creating a perfect edge that can be tucked under the window frame edge. Next, the roof film is put in place to match the fade on the door. Then it's stretched, heated, squeegeed, and knifeless once again for a perfect edge. Once the fade was done, both the back and the front are slightly easier to install because they're just a solid color change. In the R8's case, the rear is just a matte black and it goes on without an issue. However, the rear bumper is a bit more complicated and needs the exhaust tips and the black louvers removed before lightly mounting back onto the car with one or two bolts. This is done to allow Christian and Tom to pull and stretch the film without having the plastic bumper wiggle or slide around during the process. Once we were about 50% through with the installation process of the new material, I asked Christian if he sees any difference from my original film to this new material. So the car's coming out amazing and here's why. Last year we used a gloss film, we used a different brand and what happens is, is there's air channels in all of these films. These are color changing films and we don't have to use a solution behind it. So there's air channels that run all the way down to all the ends. What happens is, is after, as after a period of time and a certain amount of heat, the air channels with tension tend to fold over each other and they collapse essentially. This creates adhesive buildup and then causes some glue lines. Happens in many different ways. What we're getting here with, with the, this matte finish right here is the most pure finish I have ever seen. I couldn't actually even tell you why we're not getting any glue lines, but it can sit here for an extended period of time and not leave a single glue line. We've tried to make it happen. In the end, the glue lines are our Achilles heel. They drive us nuts, they drive everyone else nuts, and they make the finish not look as good as it could. This, on the other hand, we don't have to worry about it at all. We're getting a spectacular finish on this R8. After a few more hours, the pillars were mashed to the door and the roof and the rear lower quarter was installed on the driver's side. But I noticed a difference in the wrap's matte finish halfway between the panel in sort of a diagonal line from front to back. So we just finished up this panel and we noticed that there's a line. So what happened was we cut this line here a little tiny bit too short. So what we did was pick the bottom part up right about here, which is pretty cool that it's right on the line that we started stretching it on. And we re repositioned it and we heated it up a little bit, stretched it over, but when we stretched it over, that matte film, which is common with the matte, you stretch a little bit too far and it gives it that shininess. So the shininess is pretty much overstretching the film and it's exactly where we stretched it, but we didn't notice it until I stood up and looked at a different light. 
So easily, we're just going to peel it off, put a new piece on, and it'll be a wrap. So let's break this down a bit further. Now, for the purposes of demonstration, think of matte finish similar to mountains or a mountain range with lots of peaks and valleys, while gloss paint as the desert or flat ocean. Now, the mountains trap the sunlight, causing a more matte or dull reflection, while the ocean or gloss finish reflects the light. It bounces off the surface, giving it a shiny look. However, by overstretching the mountains, or in this case, the wrap, you make the spaces between the peaks and valleys wider and thus more reflective. Clearly, you can see the distinctive line of overstretched shininess and unstretched or closely packed together matte mountains above it. After watching and learning a ton on this very minor mistake, I asked Christian, what's the number one pitfall installers make when applying a wrap? There's basically two things that you have to worry about that are usually my concern. One is overstretching, and then the second one is stretching in a way so that we can alleviate the tension on the edges. First, I'll show you the overstretching. So what happens is a lot of people will get into the end of the panel, and this is obviously a small scale. So we'll anchor this down, we'll heat it up. We're gonna take some stretch here with the film because here on the end of the hood, we're gonna end up with a lot of bunched up film normally. So we're gonna take it and stretch it, okay? We're gonna take it, stretch it to the edge. It all looks good, right? So we'll kind of lock it in right there, right? Yep. Now what happens here if we cut this area and we're gonna trim it off to say, you know, we wanna finish up the hood. Good, wrap it around. What's gonna happen is, look, you add heat and all of a sudden the vinyl wants to pull back. Now I can show this again. If, since Larry has PPF on his hood, we can do a small cut right through the middle here. Good. No right, and you can already see it separating. Oh yeah. I don't even have to add heat. That's tension on the film. Tension uh, he, through here? Tension through this whole area that I stretched. So now it's gonna go both ways. Oh, that's awesome. Right? What we want to do is pull along the edge always. So if we pull along the edge, which means we get into a position where we have to get rid of some slack, we have to take the film and pull it across the edge. As you see me do that, I don't even have to add heat, you can see the film start to curl underneath. This, may, this ensures that the film cannot pull back this way. If I add heat to the edge, it actually wants to curl underneath, right? And it's essentially we're shrink wrapping the panels. It makes a massive difference. So is there tension through here? Well, of course there's tension through here still because we stretch through here. So it will separate through there if we do a cut, but we're not gonna be doing a cut in the middle of the hood like that. You're gonna add heat, that's what's gonna happen. It's all about where you're applying the tension. We put the tension through here. So this way we can run it across the edge here. Yes, there is tension across this edge, but it makes the vinyl want to pull in and underneath. By the time we get down here to this corner, let's say, what we would be doing is we can, we can heat and stretch again, but it's all about direction. So I'm going to pull along this edge right here and so forth, all the way so, sort of through the so entire job. line is you're pulling this direction along versus that way. Exactly. Going, so what is that? I'm not pulling to the edge. Right. I'm pulling across the edge. While Tom and Christian were working on the front bumper, I was outside Plasti dipping my front chrome grill and repainting my exhaust tips with high temp paint. Once done with the hood, we installed a light tint to the turn signals to match the new wrap and remove the old half bra on the side blade. As you can see, the blade is glossed while the rest of the car is matte. So we reinstalled a full clear bra, but in matte finish to match the overall look and feel of the matte design wrap. Notice the water lubrication being used here for the bra. It's a different type of material and a different type of installation technique. The next day, we reinstalled the taillights and secured the rear bumper once again. We repeated the same process for the front bumper and installed the freshly painted front grille so no chrome would be visible to match the vents and other plastics seamlessly. Secured the bumper to the frame with an endless amount of screws, then I mounted the wheels and tires. As a final step, Christian tinted the back lenses to match with the rest of the car in under five minutes, placed the dipped Audi rings on the front, and then signed my plate-mounted bracket for good luck.
Now, for those of you eager to leave a comment on whether you dislike or like the color fade or the matte finish, go nuts. But remember, this was a fun experiment to help understand the steps and the process for printing a custom wrap. Help a buddy test a new material on my car, and not a regular customer's car, with the knowledge I wasn't going to keep it on the car for more than a few months anyways to complete the test. And lastly, I thought it would be fun to giggle every time I drove the car this summer before removing it to do a full restoration and wet sanding video later this year. And after several months of daily driving, this new film has held up a thousand times better than my previous wrap and has no visible glue lines prompting everyone to ask if I've, quote, painted the car, which is the best compliment a vinyl wrap can get. For more information on wrap installation, visit ckwrapstoronto.com. Special thanks to Second Skin for their last minute help and Tom Coppola for his help and advice on our film test. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.